Let me tell you something. When I was in primary school, I was always getting into trouble for playing with rulers, making noises with them, using them as drumsticks, or doing this. You see, when you flick a ruler on the edge of the desk, you cause the ruler to vibrate, and that makes air vibrate, that makes your eardrum vibrate, and you hear a noise, a musical note. And you can actually change that musical note by changing the length of vibrating ruler. Watch what happens if I make it shorter. Did you notice that? The musical note was actually higher. The pitch went up. And of course, using something like a ruler or a hacksaw blade, you could, if you were clever enough, play a tune by varying the length of vibrating piece. And if you had a comb with different length teeth, you could probably play a tune on that as well. Well, of course, that's the principle behind music boxes. And I guess you've been fascinated with music boxes as I have. Look at this. This is a modern toy music box. And it has something that looks very much like a comb there. In fact, it's called a comb. Metal teeth, and they can be made to vibrate by the little bumps on this cylinder. And there's a turning mechanism as well. And the little bumps determine the sequence of teeth being flicked. And you'll notice that when the longer teeth are flicked, you get a deeper note. And with the short teeth, a high note. Well, that's a modern day toy, but these have been around for years. Here's one that was made about 1900. Same sort of mechanism inside, but you can't see it. The little handle on top, and the children of the 1900s would turn this handle and and that hear their tune that they liked as well. You may have seen a music box as small as a matchbox. Here's one that's actually inside a matchbox. See if you can recognize the tune. And maybe it is your birthday this week. Well, all of those music boxes depend on metal teeth being flicked by little bumps on a cylinder. But music boxes can be far more complex than that. At the Mechanical Music Museum in Lindock, South Australia, there is an excellent collection of music boxes. Some use cylinders, while others have interchangeable metal discs in which holes and bumps determine which musical notes will be played. This one was made in 1903 in Leipzig, Germany. The tiny holes have been punched out and strips of metal from these holes curl around to form knobs. And in this particular music box, there's a lever which in the box itself can make all of the teeth on the metal comb shorter, giving a higher effect in tone. These are the star-shaped wheels which are turned by the knobs on the disc. They in turn pluck the teeth of the metal comb. Now when we place the disc in position and hold it down with the lever, making sure that it's flat, we're then ready to play music. First of all, we need to check and see that the clockwork motor which drives the disc is fully wound. Music boxes such as this with interchangeable metal discs instead of cylinders could be used to play literally hundreds of different tunes. Polyphon Disc Music Box, made in Leipzig, Germany, and it consists of a beautiful polished timber cabinet, a glass door. The cabinet wasn't just for decoration either. By making this of very good quality timber, it meant the whole thing would resonate and it would actually amplify the music coming from it. Now, if I take this rod down, you'll see that it has not one, but two metal combs. One for the treble notes and one for bass notes. Altogether, 120 different notes could be selected from the disc that was played. Where are the discs? I'm glad you asked. They're down here in the cupboard below. So from this vast record collection, I can pick one out. Let's have a Sousa March. Now, you'll notice that this has, once again, lots of little slots. And in some ways, although it looks very different from today's compact discs, it does have some similarities to both CDs and also to computer discs, because both of those are digital. In a computer disc, magnetic on-off messages are there. In a compact disc, also on-off messages are there. And they're detected by laser beams. Well, this looks simpler, but in a sense, it's similar. Because every little hole, every little knob, means either it plays a note or it doesn't at a particular point in time. 
So in a way, it's digital, right? So we can place this in position. Because it's digital, it means that it lasts for a long time. In fact, you can have discs from machines such as this that'll play as well when they're 20, 30, 50, or even 100 years old as they were the day they were made, not subject to scratching and so on. Right, the disc is in position to get it started. Remember, this was in a public place, and members of the public who wanted music would simply close the door, put a penny in the slot, and then they'd have music for up to two minutes. Beautiful music too. Listen to it. <laughs> 